Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ryan Embry. I am the Director of Marketing here at Travel Media Group, and I want to first thank everyone for taking the time to join me on our first ever TMG Virtual Roadshow over the summer. This is our third stop in the North Texas hotel market. We are very excited to share this presentation with you all. Now, at the end of this event, we will be providing my uh, direct contact information in case you have any follow-up questions with the content that I'm gonna be sharing. But you can also use that chat feature located right there in your toolbar to type any sort of questions or feedback that you might have. We will be responding to those questions personally following the conclusion of the roadshow. Also, be on the lookout since today's event will feature an interactive poll. Would absolutely love your participation in it. So let's go ahead, get started, and introduce you to who will be driving you in today's roadshow. So good afternoon again. My name is Ryan Embry. Hello, Director of Marketing, and with me is Charles uh, Kleinsmith. Charles, welcome to the Roadshow. Well, thanks for having me, Ryan. Uh, once again, my name is Charles Kleinsmith. I'm a Hospitality Solutions Advisor for uh, all of Texas, but really spe specifically going to be in greater, greater Dallas, Fort Worth area. So uh, excited to be on here with you, Ryan, and uh, back to you. Yeah, awesome. We're going to bring Charles back a little bit later in the presentation to go over uh, a little bit more in-depth, some analytics and insights of what we talk about today. So speaking of, what are we going to be covering today? We've got a lot to cover. First, we're going to look at some search data from what travelers are actually Googling and when it comes to Dallas-Fort Worth travel. Uh, from there, we'll be able to look at some reputation trends and patterns in this market so that you can gain advantage over that local competition, make yourself look the most attractive as possible to all of these travelers that are searching right now for hotels in your market. Then we're going to look into, we're going to dive into specifically what guests are saying, right? They're leaving reviews constantly. They're leaving us clues on how to, how to improve our hotel experience. But what patterns and trends can we get from that specific guest sentiment? And finally, how can we parlay that into some really unique and uh, attractive social content for our travelers out there and we're gonna bring Charles back to give us more market insights and analysis so let's go ahead we got a lot to cover let's jump right into it um, and this first when we look into the search Google search data via Google Ads this should be a great sign for all of the hotels uh, on on this call and hotel groups on this call uh, the search hotels in Dallas is search 90,000 per month um, but the big stat that I want you to focus on is that is an 82% year-over-year increase so every single stop that we've made in this virtual roadshow we've seen an absolute jump in searches for hotels in that market this should signal obviously great signs for a hotel and occupancy numbers uh, but it also means it's going to be more competitive they're going to be doing a lot more research so let's dive into what they're looking at and for the DFW area um, places like the downtown uh, Fort Worth hotels and Fort Worth stockyards, that search volume is up 80% year over year. So obviously people are looking for attractions like the stockyards, but we're also seeing a lot more people searching in the downtown areas of these major markets. Could be an early signal to that business traveler returning uh, for 20, the end of 2022 and hopefully into 2023. So something to keep an eye on for sure. Um, things to do in Dallas this weekend had two times the search volume as Orlando. So in a major market like Orlando where people might be planning out this vacation, they have a, a really, really good idea of what they're going to be doing when they come into town. Dallas, Fort Worth could be more of a last minute stop, right? Or a last minute idea of vacation. Let's take a road trip down to Dallas or take a flight to DFW um, and what's going on this weekend. So that's really important data when we're looking at not only our reputation, but social media ideas, which we're going to talk about later. And these last three stats really play with each other. Um, best hotels in Dallas, volumes 83% uh, year over year. Obviously, this is no surprise. People want to stay and get the most bang for their buck as they can. But this one was interesting. Cheap hotels in Dallas was also up 50%. So this is where that price factor starts to come in. We've heard it all. Inflation, we know uh, prices are going up. Um, 
there's a very uh, there's a, there's a very interesting balance between these these two searches, right? Cheap hotels, but also the best hotel. Um, so the way that they're going to look at this and base that off of the, your value of a hotel is off that reputation and uh, your your online reviews. So important to keep in mind. And then the last stat here: free things to do in Fort Worth. This is just over the last three months, up 90%. So again, I think this tells a story. This tells a trend. People are going to start looking for things on their vacation to do that are a little bit more cost prohibitive. Let's jump into the reputation. And for, again, hotels in this market, I see this and I see opportunity here. Uh, this is the average uh, reputation for a hotel in the DFW area. The average positive reviews only 56%. So almost five out of 10 of these are positive reviews. The a star rating 3.44. Um, so you're, if you're listening to this and you're a hotel in one of these markets or a hotel group in these markets, you've got a, a real opportunity. If you were to focus and have a strategy on your reputation, uh, you could make major, major jumps in your market when it comes to your reputation. Make your put yourself in a more competitive uh, position. And that response rate is 40%. So four out of 10 reviews are being responded to a, a, as part of a market average. Now, if you want to get a lot more, base yourself off a little bit more competitive in your top 25%, that all of a sudden jumps up to half of your reviews being positive to so all the way up to eight out of every 10 reviews are positive. So it does get competitive up there in the top 25. And that's where we like to partner with hotels because they obviously have a really great idea of a strategy and, and, and have that reputation management in place. But that average re re review response rate still below 60%. Review response is a huge, huge opportunity to communicate and, and message your guests, um, set expectations. Uh, this is a huge opportunity for this market. So if you aren't responding to your reviews, make sure you are um, and have a reputation management strategy in place. So now that we found out kind of the uh, the uh, positive and negative, let's look at where people are leaving their reviews. And this has been the same for every major market we visited. TripAdvisor and Google are still getting uh, the biggest portion and share of reviews in this market, over 60%. Luckily, our reputation management program at Travel Media Group focuses on these two, uh, these two sites specifically. TripAdvisor is still the uh, source of truth for travel right now when it comes to reviews, but Google has been getting a lot more qu quantity of reviews. Um, so making sure you have a strategy for both of these, very, very critical to your overall reputation. Um, so when people do leave those reviews, uh, how often are they positive? How often are they negative? Uh, TripAdvisor, we're seeing uh, reviews in the Dallas, Fort Worth, North Texas market. About 86% of the time when they're leaving a review on TripAdvisor, it's going to be positive. Uh, Google's down to 74, 71 uh, at booking and 85. So I think what this tells you is a couple things. If you're not seeing a, a majority of your positive reviews come from places like TripAdvisor and Expedia, the chances are on Google and booking, the reviews aren't going to be uh, aren't going to be as positive there as well. Um, so something to notate. Very interesting point there. And then lastly, what we did is we kind of looked at the, the guest sentiment tag. So what exactly are guests talking about? And we, we identified the top three positive sentiment tags in the North Texas market. Number one, actually tied for number one, is location and breakfast. Uh, so obviously people are caring about where they're coming in. This is a huge opportunity for hotels to uh, notate what's around them, attractions, um, if there's event centers, um, even things like restaurants or just talking about your neighborhood. Breakfast, if we have very descriptive pictures of our breakfast, we talk about um, what we're offering for breakfast. This one's still interesting because some hotels are still in that pre pandemic or have gotten back to that pre pandemic breakfast. Um, and some are still in the to go area. And that could be because of uh, safety and health guidelines or because of staffing right now and not being able to staff up that breakfast area. 
Um, and then finally, cleanliness. I think this was super, super important. We saw uh, over the past couple of years, a lot of hotels uh, really have a focus on their cleanliness um, protocols. So again, if you're not seeing a majority of these reviews um, and tags be positive, you might want to see where there's errors. Um, and Charles will talk to you about how you can identify those sources a little bit later. Um, but we also wanted to identify the negative, and this has been coming up on a lot of our markets that we've been visiting. Odor, obviously number one, 76% of the time someone's mentioning odor, it's typically in a negative sense. Uh, not a lot of people are uh, coming on talking about odor in a positive way. Price, 50-50 split right here, right? And this is where, again, we get into those pricing. ADR is at an all-time high great for hotel industry, but people are looking more and more at the prices of everything, their gas, their grocery bill, and now they're going to start looking at the, at the receipts of their vacation and, and, and starting to say, is this worth it? Um, so there's a, there's a lot of different things that we can do to make sure that we're showing value um, in our guest experience. Um, and then bathroom, 48% of the time, so it's still a 50-50 split there. Um, so as we get into social post performance, this is where we're really taking some of those trends and kind of leveraging them in order to capture more business. So breakfast, again, very descriptive, exactly talking, um, talking exactly what the hotel is offering, has a, a high definition photo there. Cleanliness, this one, I absolutely love this post because it's obviously recognizing the housekeepers on staff, uh, but it's also showing kind of subconsciously to to your guests and to your follower um, that you have that you prioritize cleanliness um, so a post like this can be very very powerful recognizing housekeeping staff maybe just reiterating the way that you're cleaning um, your, your rooms and the process and steps that you take uh, it's something very very powerful might not might not have been that big of a deal maybe say five uh five years ago but people are definitely paying attention now to these type of posts and appreciating them uh local stories this is a great idea of just showing what fourth worth has to offer um, and telling that story people are looking for that unique experience they don't want that same old bland vacation they want to find where the locals go um, do what the locals do so start incorporating that into your social strategy you might have been at this property and lived in the area for decades but most of your travelers haven't so it's up to you and on you to tell that story to them through um, through, through posts like this. And then I put this one as extra value, right? So again, when it comes down to pricing and, and guests starting to take a really, really hard look at what your hotel offers versus the hotel next door, this is a great way uh, to kind of show what, you know, whether it's a shuttle service, whether it's your gym or your pool, um, to add value to the guest experience, to the hotel experience. So this could be the one determining factor where they say, hey, you know what, I know this, this hotel is a little bit more pricier than the hotel down the road, but it's got a better reputation and it offers a free shuttle service, which will save us, you know, Lyft and Uber dollars, right? So great, great posts here. Absolutely love to see it. And it's really taking advantage of the competitive advantage that it has in its market. So that's the market data. I want to bring Charles back in because again, he's the one that's talking to these hoteliers in this, this market and all of Texas on a daily basis. Um, Charles, take it away. Yeah, and thanks, Ryan, again for that. I mean, Ryan, you've gone over so many really good points in in the course of the last, what, uh, 15 minutes or so. And I want to bring everybody back down to earth here because every hotel is different. And, and the data points that we have for every, every scenario is going to be specific to the property or group of properties if you have more than one. And just even what you're looking at here is, is just diving into this data set points of what can help you as a, as a hotelier, as a, as a general manager, as someone who is looking to improve your online presence and the story that you get to share. And more often than not, the, the thing that holds a lot of it back when it comes to an online presence of what we've seen and what I've found with, with calling into the market is, is going to be a staffing issue. And as you see here, it's, it's, it's not just a positive mention. It is, a, is it a negative mention within the example given? And this, 
the the services that we do provide give you that time back and that's why I, I love meeting with with hoteliers and general managers what I can do to share with them how I can get their time back to allow them to to really focus on things that on, on the physical property to where they can really do more of an impact to be able to correct these things and and Ryan, I, I definitely appreciate everything that you've been able to to go over today. And, and I'm just excited to be able to continue working within the market to help each and every one of the hoteliers that give us a chance to, to show them how we can improve that for them. Yeah, Charles has some incredible stories, but he's absolutely right when it comes to your specific hotel. And that's why these consultations are so valuable. Uh, you know, these trends and patterns are great to look at from a high level. Um, but as Charles mentioned, each property is different. Um, we absolutely love doing that, and the, his, Charles and his team uh, do a great job of it. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch a poll, our uh, first and only poll, to see if there are any hotels or hotel groups that would like to meet uh, with Charles or are interested in meeting with Charles to go over uh, you know, this for their property and see exactly what they need to work on um, and how they can capture essentially more uh, more occupancy and grow that ADR. So I'll get, go ahead and give everyone a quick minute to uh, to engage in this poll. And then in a second here, I'm going to be uh, sharing my direct contact information in case anyone has any questions uh, with the content. Or uh, if you've got hotels in another market, we are more than willing to do uh, to, to do this for your market as well. So give everyone a quick second. Awesome. So as promised, here is my direct contact information in case you have any questions. I want to thank Charles uh, for taking the time to join me on this virtual roadshow and have a fantastic rest of your week. Goodbye, everyone.